Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by your own power or piety we made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witness. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him the perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through the prop all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Psalm 4, answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship them fools and then I false gods? Know that God does, wonderful, does wonders for all the faithful. I call upon the Lord, he'll hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better th times. Lift up your light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increased. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. Only you, Lord, can make me dwell in safety. A 
lesson from the first book of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take sins away, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the disciples were telling how they had seen Jesus risen from the dead, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In our gospel this morning, it is the resurrection morning once again. It's Easter all over. Last week, we heard the account from St. John's gospel, and this week we hear it from St. Luke's gospel. In Luke's account, strangely, Thomas is present. Remember last week, it was all about doubting Thomas. He wasn't there in time to be there when Jesus appeared to the other ten, and so Jesus makes a special appearance and tells Thomas specifically, look, here I am, touch my wounds. And today, that's what he's saying to all of them. We pick up our gospel today a little bit in the middle of what's really transpiring, because we have disciples speaking to disciples and things taking place. And to set the stage, what's just happened is Jesus appeared to the two on the road to Emmaus. And they have made their way back to Jerusalem, to the upper room, to the place where the disciples are, and they are sharing their account of being visited and having seen the resurrected Christ. And so they're sharing with one another about this, and lo and behold, what happens? But Jesus appears. He has risen from the grave. He invites them to touch him. And then, and then he asks, do you have anything to eat? Why? Was he hungry? Been dead a few days, could be hungry. Was it to prove he wasn't a ghost? Well, perhaps. 
Why does Jesus care about food? He's just risen from the dead. He appears to his shocked followers. And one of the first things he does is ask about food, about eating. Why? I believe it may be because of something that we Westerners have forgotten if we ever knew it in the first place. It's because of something intimate, deeply personal. It's bonding and relational. Important things happen around food in the Gospels. Indeed, throughout the entirety of Scripture, but just limit your recollection to the Gospels. Think about the interactions Jesus had with people and think about how many of them involved food, involved meals, involved eating with others. We pick up the Gospels, the wedding feast in Cana. Eating, Jesus was accused of, eating with publicans and Pharisees and tax collectors. There was the multiplication of the fish and the loaves on several occasions. There was Jesus telling Zacchaeus, get down out of that tree, Zacchaeus. I need to have dinner with you at your house today. There's the various visits to Bethany, to the house of Lazarus, and to the home of Martha and Mary. And then, of course, there's the Last Supper. And all of these accounts and many more take place prior to the crucifixion. But after the resurrection, on Easter morning, there is, as I just alluded to, the road to Emmaus when those several disciples recognized him in the breaking of the bread, they were sharing a meal. And now in today's gospel, in this same upper room, as where they celebrated the Last Supper, the resurrected Jesus comes to eat with them again. And even later on, on the shores of the lake, when Jesus reinstates Peter, Jesus is busy cooking fish. In each and every one of those accounts, there is a bonding. A life-changing relationship is being established and founded. Meal sharing is sacred. It is that moment in time when life is exchanged, one with another. To this day, there are cultures in the world where an invitation to dinner is an invitation to not just eating, but to friendship. It's not just an invitation to come have a hot dog or a sandwich with me. It's an invitation to deep and intimate friendship. Friendship where there is peace and trust, where there's mercy and humility and forgiveness. It is an invitation that says, come to my home, my table, my sanctuary, my altar, And we will celebrate the most beautiful experience that life affords. Friendship. This, I believe, is why Jesus is always offering life-changing moments around food. In the upper room at the Last Supper, Jesus dramatically states that he no longer calls his followers, the disciples, those gathered in that room, He no longer calls them servants. Now, he calls them friends. You are my friends, Jesus said to them. And here's what's so important about the transition, the nomenclature, the term friend. This week I was reading an article, and in it the author summarizes the famous 12th century theologian, Richard of St. Victor. How many know of Richard of St. Victor? Okay, same as eight o'clock. So far I got no takers on Richard. But Richard wrote about God. He wrote about the mystery of the Trinity. In essence, he said that the Trinity can be summed up as a mutual friendship between Three. A mutual friendship between three. For God to be good, said Richard, God can be one. For God to be loving, God has to be two. Because love is always a relationship of giving and receiving. 
But for God to be joy-filled and happy, God has to be three. Richard said, delight comes from two together, enjoying and rejoicing the same thing at the same time. It's like new parents loving their child. The love flows in in an eternal circle instead of just back and forth between two. His theology, Richard's theology, places friendship at the very heart of God. Real friendship is love which goes from one to the other. Love is no effort then. It flows in each new moment between the one who agrees to start the flow of love, the second who receives and reciprocates the the flow, and the third who becomes the beneficiary of the flow of love itself. And they're constantly, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they're constantly changing places, the three persons of the Trinity, a mutual and absolute friendship. The resurrected Jesus appears to his beloved and invites them into the very heart of the Trinity, into the very life of God, not as strangers, not as servants, but as friends. And just as the followers in the gospel today were invited, so too are we. Jesus invites us to share in the meal, to receive the Eucharist, to accept our relationship as friends with God and to enter into the life of God and share the love we receive from the Trinity with one another as friends. Think about it. Our worship, our liturgy, the Eucharist, here we are, we have gathered together. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is here and we're telling the family stories in the readings and in the Gospels. We're about to gather around the table, the altar, and enter into a deeper relationship with Jesus and with one another as we're spiritually nourished and filled. So, great. What's my point? My point is this. We are now in a society and a culture where friendships are disappearing where families are disintegrating. People are looking all over for substitutes. They're turning to sports and recreation. They're turning to alcohol and drugs. Some are looking to their work or to gangs. We are created to belong. Way back at the beginning of the Bible, God said in Genesis, it's not good to be alone. We are created with a deep-seated need to belong, to be in relationship with God and with one another, to be friends with God and friends with one another. And here's the good news. You don't have to look any further. You don't have to be alone any longer. You don't need to be striving to belong ever again. May we embrace and enjoy the blessings and the grace that friendship with Jesus and friendship with one another offers. Belonging, community, fellowship, compassion, concern, care, service, support, respect, in short, love. Let us be bold enough to enter into the life of the Trinity, which is the love of God. Let us go and tell and invite others into this friendship that they too may enter into the grace and the blessings of belonging. Jesus rose again from the dead and immediately invited the disciples into the intimacy of friendship, of belonging, of sharing in the life and love of God. And that invitation and reality exists for us too. Through the Eucharist, Jesus invites us to share in his life and in the love of God. An invitation that says, come to my table, my sanctuary, my altar, 
and we will celebrate the most beautiful experience that life affords, friendship. Through the sharing of this simple Eucharistic meal, we are invited to belong, to belong to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and to belong to one another in friendship and godly love. Amen. Standing, let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are Form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Rob, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will. And those good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask, 
Grant us, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, please be seated. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody today. There's a number of new faces here that have joined us and we offer a special welcome to those people. And uh, if you see somebody you don't recognize, please introduce yourself and please welcome them. Uh, on May 2nd, we'll be out at Brunswick Town at 10.30 in the morning. After that, we will have a uh, bring your own picnic, since we can't share food, so that'll work. And there will also be an 8 a.m. service here on Sunday morning, May 2nd. Uh, the um, women of the church are doing a lot. The Lunch Bunch is uh, getting together uh, on the 26th at Duffer's Pub and Grill. So contact, look at your... Uh, e-news for details on that. And preparations are getting underway for the fall festival, and there'll be a uh, workshop at Deborah Alt's house on Friday, April 30th. And since my car is now full of shells, I really would appreciate your going and getting rid of the bloody things. Uh, secondly, as you see, uh, work continues on our uh, new parish hall, and I found out or was reminded again that on Friday afternoons, everybody quits at noon, and that's why the equipment is still sitting out there, because the guys decided it was time to go home. So <laughs> we have to deal with that. We're always recruiting ushers for our services. With three services, it takes a lot of people to uh, run that. And a reminder at dismissal, please wait for the ushers to uh, escort you out so we can practice social distancing at the end of the service. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Paul. Good morning. We have a, r a round of announcements this morning. The uh, E! News this week contains a link and an article about Leith Ethan McLaughlin. Ethan is a parishioner, a former acolyte, and a candidate for Eagle Scout. And he's chosen to offer us an arbor for the labyrinth area and the leadership of his scout troop, if you will, to refurbish the labyrinth. And it's going to save a lot of old knees, believe me. So if you haven't had an opportunity to read that, please do. I think you'll enjoy it. Ethan couldn't be with us today because of an obligation that he has, uh, but he's certainly here in spirit. And if you'll notice as you leave in the narthex today, there is a poster of the proposed um, arbor and the grounds, and if you'd like to make a donation towards the construction of that, please help us out. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dave and Bill. Um, for my first time doing announcements, it's really easy when they do all the announcements. I am grateful for that. I believe there are some new people here. Welcome, and to all of you beautiful faces that we see more often, welcome again, of course. Um, for communion, you stay in your spots and we come to you. It is super easy on all of you, and that's amazing. Put your hands out if you want to receive. Um, we're only doing wafers. We're only doing bread, no shared cup. We haven't figured out how to do that safely in COVID. Um, if you don't want to receive communion, you can cross your arms across your chest, and either Father Eric or myself will give you a blessing if you wish. Or if you don't want either of those, you can just remain seated, and we will try to leave you alone in prayer. I think that's good, right? Oh, good. My first day announcements, I passed. Yes. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this, as, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Philip and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, 
In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
please stand and let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, go forth in the name of Christ. <laughs>